Crypto gaming is one of the sectors with the most upside potential in a bull run. Currently, its market capitalization is $14 billion. But when we compare this to the traditional Web2 gaming world, we can see it's still lagging significantly behind with traditional gaming predicted to hit a $389 billion market capitalization by the year of 2028. And we can see that the global gaming market is not slowing down. Demand for gaming, demand for advertising on gaming is only growing larger and larger year by year. And even if crypto gaming can only get a tiny slice of that pie, there's huge upside potential for a lot of these crypto games to pull 10, 20, 50, even 100 X's in a bull run. So in today's video, I want to discuss the top five crypto gaming coins that I am adding to my crypto portfolio for the bull run and also discuss my thesis behind crypto gaming and the types of projects that I look for and how I incorporate that into my overall investment strategy. So before I get into my top five crypto gaming picks, I want to point out that over 63% of the people watching these videos aren't even subscribed. So if you're one of them and you haven't subscribed, come join the family. I put a lot of work every single week into this content and I would love to see that subscriber ratio get up to 50% by the end of the year. So let's see if we can do it. And while you're at it, also click that post notification bell because only 23% of my subscribers have actually turned the bell on. On this channel, you can expect deep dive analysis, market commentary, altcoin picks, airdrop farming strategies, and more. I do my best to help you succeed in the market. That is my mission with this channel. I want to grow an amazing community where we all come out ahead together next cycle. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Before I get into the exact gaming picks, I want to talk about my thesis a little bit behind why I believe crypto gaming can be one of the sectors that outperforms in the crypto market. On October 8th, I did a tweet saying, despite the recent decline in funding, one sector remains markedly strong gaming. Don't forget that crypto gaming is still one of crypto's biggest retail adoption verticals. I actually tweeted this when no one was talking about gaming. And obviously since then, a lot more people have started to jump back on the bandwagon again. But the point I was trying to make out here is that despite a lot of other sectors like DeFi and NFTs actually not raising as much capital during the bear market, crypto gaming was markedly strong compared to other sectors, which means VCs were more willing compared to other verticals to pour money into crypto gaming. And we know a big constituent of a project's success relies on its development and development relies heavily on funding. So seeing a lot of new funding go into crypto games is obviously a major plus for the industry. Another reason I like crypto gaming is because retail can understand it. So one of the major lessons that I've learned over the last few years is oftentimes it's better to left curve the market and invest in protocols that is easily understandable by the general retail public because at the end of the day, in a bull run, that's the audience you're catering towards. So retail doesn't necessarily care so much about the latest VEZK interoperability, L3 aggregator, and all this crazy technical jargon. They just want to buy narratives that they can get their head around. So I like to think simple things like meme coins, gaming, AI, narratives that retail can easily align with. And I think gaming definitely fits the bill as one of the most accessible narratives for retail. I also think that gaming in general can be a huge net positive for the crypto ecosystem as they're great onboarders of new users. So I think there's amazing infrastructure that crypto's already built across the DeFi sphere, but there aren't many strong ways to entice new retail users to come into crypto. So I do view gaming as one of the major adoption verticals that can get people in. And once you're interacting with the blockchain, then of course, some of that liquidity is going to filter in to other protocols as well. So a lot of my theses surrounding other narratives do rely on strong adoption verticals. And I think things like NFTs and crypto gaming do offer the potential to really appeal to new users. So I'm all for supporting the development of amazing crypto dApps because I think it's a big net positive for the space. And some of the sectors that I view as genuine retail adoption verticals are, as I said, gaming and NFTs, but also real world assets. Because I think with RWAs, there is a huge net benefit to conducting treasury yields and real estate, etc., on chain, just due to the lowering of accessibility barriers and also making it much more efficient versus dealing with a lot of middlemen counterparties like you would in the traditional real world asset space. So those are some of the verticals I'm bullish on in terms of retail adoption. Without further ado, let's focus on crypto gaming. Let's go through my top five crypto gaming picks 
for next cycle. These are coins that I'm actively looking at building positions in. Some of these coins like pick number one that I'll reveal in today's video, I already have a pretty decently sized position in. Some of these other coins, I'm still in the process of building my positions as well. So I've decided to go with a variety of coins here, coins that I'm super bullish on in the immediate future, coins I'm bullish on long term, and I have ranked them from number five, which I guess is my least conviction bet in today's video to rank number one, which is my highest conviction bet, but that's mostly just based on my portfolio size, not necessarily my conviction in terms of my belief, because rank number five and rank number four are coins that I'm actively looking to accumulate as well. And in fact, I think they can be some of the strongest performers this cycle. So I've done my best to make this a well-rounded list that does encompass uh, a large scope of the crypto gaming ecosystem. So theoretically, if you were to build a portfolio with, let's say, just these five projects, you're getting nice exposure to a variety of market caps, but also a variety of verticals within crypto gaming. Now, just so you have an understanding of how I like to invest when I approach crypto gaming, I much prefer going after things like gaming studios, blockchains, infrastructure, versus individual games themselves. So you won't see games like Alluvium, for example, or Sandbox on this list, because I prefer the gaming studios and infrastructure plays as more pick and shovel indirect plays to gaming exposure. Because just think about it logically, if one game fails, then that token's going to fail. But if you back a really good team and a really good studio that are pumping out multiple games or providing infrastructure for multiple games, then individual games can fail, but that project can still succeed. So I view it as a higher RR play, at least for me personally and how I view crypto gaming to go after the gaming studios and the gaming infrastructure. So all the coins today aren't individual games. They're actually full ecosystems or infrastructure to facilitate the overall crypto gaming ecosystem. So let's get in with coin number five. This is Echelon Prime. Now you may have heard of Echelon Prime. It's definitely been talked about recently, but if you have I don't blame you because it's a relatively new project that has recently risen to fruition through its card game, which is Parallel. Now, Parallel is a sci-fi card trading game, which has been played over 50,000 times already during its short lifespan. Um, and it's a very cool game and one of the most fleshed out card games that we've seen in crypto so far. But Echelon Prime is also a studio. So this isn't their first foray into the gaming world. I think they're going to be releasing many more games and building upon the ecosystem that they've already established with Parallel. And we know they have the backing to do this because they raised 50 million at a whopping $500 million valuation from Yunt Capital Focus Labs and the biggest one of them all, Paradigm. So they have big backers. Another thing I really like about Prime is the fact that they've got a Coinbase listing. Not many crypto games are listed on Coinbase. So when retail comes into the market and wants to buy crypto games, accessibility here is going to be a huge factor. And what exchange is most accessible to the US public? Well, it's Coinbase. And of course, it already has listings on things like Bybit, BitGet, on the DEXs, it's on Uniswap. So it's super accessible. They've got big funding, big backing. Uh, they've done an amazing job with their original game, but I do think that there are also going to be many new products being shipped from Echelon Prime. So that's why it makes number five on this list. In terms of the chart, it's a difficult one to chart because it's a recently listed token. So for me, my strategy with newly launched coins like this that I want to accumulate but have already ran is to start buying major support levels on pullbacks. Now, maybe the pullbacks won't be as deep as you like, but my strategy is to buy pullbacks on extreme red days. And I probably will approach this in spot only because if you start adding leverage to a coin like this that is pumped, it's very easy to get stopped out on your order. So for me, focusing mostly on spot, buying on major pullbacks. I'm not going to FOMO in, but if you do feel like FOMOing into a coin, my general rule is put in 20 to 30% to get an initial position. And then with the remaining 70 to 80% reserve that for major pullbacks. And generally in at least the early stages of a bull market, that strategy can work um, because at the end of the day, your goal is to accumulate as much as possible ahead of next cycle using pullbacks in order to do so. Sticking to spot will also help make sure you don't get shaken out. But of course, only buy coins that you have major conviction in. There's no point buying something just because, you know, a creator tells you to buy it. You've got to do your own research, make sure you're bullish, make sure you understand the narrative and the thesis behind a coin, write down that thesis, you're in validation, and then you're good to go when it comes to accumulating. Altcoin number four, on today's list is Cedify. 
Cedify is a gaming launch pad. I don't know if you remember from last cycle, but some of the biggest gaming IDOs took place on Cedify. In fact, the average launch per IDO on Cedify in 2021 was a 44X. That means on average, the tokens that launched through Cedify and IDO'd and were incubated on Cedify went up a 44X. It's absolutely insane. So pretty much how it works is you lock up S fund tokens, depending on how much you stake, you get a bigger portion of the pool. And when new games decide to launch on Cedify, then you get priority access in order to buy into those games. So the whole thesis behind Cedify is the more people that come into the market during a bull run, the more demand a token like S fund is going to have because you have a bunch of people scrambling to buy the token to stake it to get access to these new crazy launches. Now, Elio Trades, I'm sure you already know him, outlined his thesis on Cedify. So I want to play you a 30 second clip from an interview that he did because I think he explains it really, really well. Let's hear from Elio. Um, and then when you talk about launch pads, those are, those are going to absolutely crush, right? Because once we get into the, the heat of the market, um, and you know, we get back to more of a silly mode, which is, which is going to happen, right? I don't care what anybody says, it's gonna happen. Uh, more liquidity, lots of people hungry for gains, uh, new projects launching with low float, um, launch pads effectively get priority access, help with marketing, and those tokens are gonna fly, right? Um, so you know, uh, launch pads I'm fully allocated to because they're dirt cheap right now, there's no hype. So I'll just get in and once it's hot again, I don't wanna DCA into those, I just wanna have my launch pad allocation. So I have those allocations ready. Those are the only things I'm 100% allocated towards. Um, and those I so Elio is saying there that he's really allocated to launch pads because he views in a bull run There'll be a lot of demand for these tokens and That's pretty similar to my thesis as well surrounding tokens like Cedify and other launch pads But Cedify being the biggest most established and most well proven one in this niche That is why I've picked it um, as my top pick in the launch pad sector You can see as well. They've started to break multiple high time frame resistance levels It's recently flipped this 150 level into support and is looking to target the next level at the $3 range. But if you zoom out, there is still a long way to go in terms of Cedify in a bull run. So I do think this is one that can perform really, really well in a bull run. And you definitely have those higher price targets once retail starts coming back in. Similar to Prime, this is one on major dips that I am looking at stacking and adding to my portfolio. Full disclosure, I am a holder of the Cedify token, and they are also a partner of my show as well, as it's an ecosystem that I am bullish on in the long term. Let's move on to altcoin number three. This is Gala Games. I think Gala Games being the biggest gaming studio, the one with a big market cap, a lot of trust in terms of just its name and brand in the market, um, is one that I'm certainly interested in stacking for next cycle, considering just the vast ecosystem they've managed to build. If you go onto their website and scroll through uh, a lot of the new games here, you can just see the sheer pace at which they're shipping new products. And you can also see they're launching new games all the time. And they're just a really well-developed, well-rounded studio. Now, there are some studios which I think have been more impressive during the bear market, but just in terms of Gala's size and its reputability, even at a market cap of $754 million, I think this one still has a lot of upside in a bull run. And I do still want exposure to some of the bigger gaming protocols. I also like Immutable. It didn't make the this list for a couple of reasons, but that's also a play in the top five that I would look at. But I did choose Gala over Immutable just because I think its tokenomics are slightly better. And also I like the concept of a studio, maybe a little more than a gaming L2, but that's not to say that Immutable can't perform well as well. So Gala comes in at number three on this list. At number two on this list, I have Nakamoto Games. For me, this is the studio that was more exciting. I'm seeing a little bit more developing over at Nakamoto and they're gaining a lot of momentum. Um, and for me, it's kind of slightly surpassed Gala, at least, in, and maybe there's a bit of recency bias here, but at least in my opinion, it's slightly surpassed it uh, in terms of my outlook, considering the fully diluted is 370, so it's less than half the market cap of Gala, yet it has this amazing ecosystem starting to develop. You can see one of their major games here, Naka Single Strike, recently launched. You have Spooky Run as well. If you click on their game section and click on play to earn, you can see just the sheer amount of games that they're shipping with a large focus towards the mobile market. Uh, and it's really unique that they're targeting mobile more so than the desktop games because it's a huge addressable market. The mobile gaming market is projected to reach $1 trillion 
by 2030. And if you look at the Web2 gaming breakdowns of where the market capitalization for gaming is allocated, you can see by 2028, it's estimated that mobile games alongside in-game advertising is going to be the biggest vertical of traditional gaming. So the mobile gaming market is massive, especially in Asia. Just the sheer amount of people with access to a mobile phone um, and just the ease of use on a mobile phone, especially as Web3 integrations become better on these devices. I think there's just so much potential, which makes Nakamoto, a project that's actively attacking this vertical, uh, definitely a bet that I wanna make for next cycle. And they're hoping that this can lead to 3 billion mobile gamers uh, playing on Nakamoto games. I don't know if they're gonna get there, but they don't need to. Even 30 million, in my opinion, would lead to a, a huge surge in price. So at a 370 fully diluted, it's one that I think is reasonable. And that's why it is number two on my list today. Um, I really do like the mobile gaming focus. Let's go on to number one. And it, it was pretty hard to order these tokens, as I said. So I, in the end, I had to order more in terms of like um, my positions. But PYR comes in at number one. It's my biggest bag for full disclosure out of all the tokens I named in today's video. Partly because I got in super early, partly because I have a lot of conviction. And Vulcan Forge is another gaming studio. So you will notice a trend here. Infrastructure studios is what I like to invest in rather than the individual games. And that's because of the thesis that I explained before. But PYR also has an amazing ecosystem that's building out. They've got Berserk. They've got Tartarus. They've got Tower Defense. They've got Vulcan Runner, etc. And they've also got a metaverse ecosystem that they're building out, which allows you to build your own digital world and your own creation. So it's almost like an SDK in the sense that they're empowering developers to use Metascapes in order to create their own world. So PYR is an ecosystem I really like because they've got the metaverse angle. Um, they've got decent tokenomics with PYR and Lava with the dual token model. They've got a bunch of games launching. They've got their own chain, which is Elysium. And more importantly, I've just seen the team relentlessly shipping throughout the bear market. And this is one thing that I really look at closely when it comes to projects that I buy into. How did they respond to the bear? Did they go quiet and just come back when the hype came back? Or were they relentlessly shipping and working hard? And I, I must say that PYR, um, Vulcan Forge worked extremely hard throughout this period. And it gave me a lot of faith and confidence in the team's propensity to ship amazing products. So PYR is a conviction hold. You will actually see if you go back onto my Twitter, December 7th last year, I outlined my buy plan to buy a little at $3, buy some more at $2.60, buy more at three on the breakout. And we've seen the price pump all the way up to, I think almost $8. And where does it sit now? It sits around $6 as well. So we've done super well since those initial entries up more than a 2X. If you were using leverage, which I wasn't, you may be up like a 10 or a 20X. But for me, this is a great one to continue adding spot on my major horizontal high time frame levels on the daily and the weekly as per the strategy that I outlined two videos ago. So if you wanna know more about how I actually buy and sell projects, I'll link that video in the description or you can go onto my channel and look at a video I did two videos ago um, That explains how I actually buy into projects that I fundamentally believe in I'll link that at the end and in the description. So PYR is my number one pick So let me know in the comments below if you watch the entire video I will be doing a giveaway soon for the loyal followers that support and watch the entire shows It means so much to me that you would spend around 20 minutes of your time watching the entire video So if that's you let say in the comments below I watch the entire video or I watch the whole video um, and and maybe I'll do a giveaway in the near future to reward those people. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button because I upload crypto content every single week. And in the future, I plan on ramping up these uploads. I really want to start uploading two, three, four, five times per week. That's something next year that I'm going to be doing as well. Um, I really appreciate the support. This channel's been exploding recently. I feel the love on Twitter. I feel the love on YouTube. So I want to thank all of you for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed these gaming picks and let me know if I missed any, of course, in the comments below. And I'll see you next week for another video. Have a lovely rest of your day. Peace out.